Geography 6, Economics. Economic activities are divided into sectors, and industry is divided into sectors of industry. Economic activities happen in certain places for specific reasons. People are impacted by the way that economic activity happens in different places. Nations enter into trade agreements to facilitate international trade and economic growth. There are winners and losers in this process. Four sectors of the economy. And they are public, which is government. Private, which is business. Voluntary, nonprofit institutions such as religious organizations or secular charities. And household, individuals and families. The public sector. The public sector is the government. The government is a large part of the economy. The government collects taxes and borrows money from the private and household sectors. The government pays for contracts with the private sector and pays salaries and entitlements to the household sector. The headquarters of government agencies are usually located near the seats of government, like Washington, D.C. for the federal government or Montgomery for the state of Alabama with offices located near constituents served by the agencies. Government agencies. Many government agencies have a role in the economy. These include the Department of the Treasury, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, the Federal Reserve Board, the Internal Revenue Service, and the Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, of course, there are many more agencies involved in the economy than this. These are simply five important ones among many. The Department of the Treasury. The Department of the Treasury is a cabinet-level government agency that manages the finances of the U.S. government. Mission. Serve the American people and strengthen national security by managing the U.S. government's finances effectively, promoting economic growth and stability, and ensuring the safety, soundness, and security of the U.S. and international financial systems. The FDIC. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, regulates banks. The FDIC may inspect and close banks that fail to comply with its rules. The FDIC insures all U.S. bank accounts up to $250,000 to prevent runs on the banks, attempts by most account holders to withdraw all money on that day, common in the Great Depression. The Federal Reserve Board The Federal Reserve Board is a quasi-public institution the President appoints and the Senate confirms the Chairman. However, the government does not control the actions of the Federal Reserve Board. It is a privately owned institution. The Federal Reserve Board attempts to manage the speed of economic growth in the U.S. by adjusting the interest rates that it charges banks to borrow money. By lowering interest rates, it's less expensive to borrow money. Therefore, businesses trying to start up, can afford to take out a loan at low interest rates to start the business. On the other hand, if the economy becomes too active, the Federal Reserve Board may raise interest rates to slow down the economy to prevent an economic bubble, a situation where rapid growth then leads to a rapid collapse of the economy. The Internal Revenue Service. The Internal Revenue Service, or IRS, collects taxes for the federal government in the United States. The IRS has broad powers to investigate and arrest those suspected of tax fraud. 
the SEC. No, not the football one. The Securities Exchange Commission regulates the sale of stocks and other financial instruments in the United States. They protect investors from fraud and maintain the integrity of the stock and commodity exchanges. Their job is to make investors feel safe so the investors will continue to invest money in the stock market um, or bond market, commodities market, what have you. The private sector. The private sector includes for-profit businesses from small family operated stores to big multinational corporations. Everything from the mom and pop snack shop all the way up to Microsoft. The private sector is the engine that powers the economy. Private and public sector industries are divided into the primary, secondary, and tertiary sectors of industry. That is the first, second, and third sectors of industry. The primary sector of industry. The primary sector of industry involves the gathering or extraction of natural resources. Divisions include genetic industries and extractive industries. Industries that produce materials with genes are the genetic industries. These include farming, fishing, logging, do not confuse this with the genetic engineering. Most genetic industries still do without genetically modified organisms or GMOs, although they are increasingly common. Farms and agribusiness. Farms, ranches, and related businesses are called agribusinesses. These private sector institutions provide food, fiber, for example, cotton or wool, and other renewable resources to the economy. Farming is primary sector genetic industry. Farms are located in areas where land costs less money. Fishing. Fishing, and for some nations, whaling, involves catching aquatic animals such as fish, shrimp, and lobsters for use as food or raw materials for manufacturing. Modern industrial fishing methods have depleted many species and once provided food for millions of people. Codfish are the best example of a species depleted by overfishing. Fishing is primary sector genetic industry. Fishing fleets are based out of ports capable of handling the ships. Logging. Logging harvests trees for use as lumber or pulp, that is, ground up wood. Lumber is used in buildings and furniture. Pulp is used in paper and cheap furniture, the type that when you break it open, it looks like somebody glued a lot of splinters together because somebody glued a lot of splinters together. Logging is primary sector genetic industry. Logging requires a lot of land and a climate that helps trees grow. Logging operations are located where land is inexpensive and the climate favors the species of trees to be grown. For example, behind my house in Dale County, Alabama, there are miles and miles of pine trees that have been planted and are farmed and logged. And that's one of the industries in Dale County where the land is very inexpensive. Extractive industries. Mines extract solid mineral resources from the earth. Examples of mined resources include gold, silver, coal, diamonds, lignite, a soft form of coal found in DeSoto Parish in Louisiana, tin, halite or salt crystals, the type that are mined at Avery Island in southern Louisiana, and iron. Wells extract liquid or gaseous resources from the earth. 
Examples of such resources include crude oil, natural gas, water, and sulfur. Mines and wells are located where the minerals are found. Secondary sector of industry. Businesses that create a tangible product, one that may be touched, are the secondary sector of industry. These are divided into light and heavy industry. The three parts of the secondary sector of industry are manufacturing and construction and power generation. Manufacturers. Manufacturers process raw materials into products used by other businesses, government agencies, or households. For example, a steel mill processes iron, tin, and coke into steel. An automobile manufacturer buys the steel and produces cars. Businesses, government agencies, and families, and sometimes voluntary service agencies, buy the cars. Factories are often located near the resources needed to produce the goods, such as iron mines. However, low shipping costs permit many factories to be located where the cheapest labor may be found rather than nearest the materials needed. Construction. Construction is part of the secondary sector of industry. Construction is the creation of relatively permanent, immovable structures and infrastructure, for example, roads, railroad tracks, and bridges. Very cold climates may require that construction be completed during the warmer seasons when the ground is not frozen. In a state like Alabama, Construction be done almost year-round, but somewhere like perhaps uh, North Dakota, it might be very challenging to do construction when the ground is frozen. Power generation. Electric utilities such as AEP Swepco or P River Electric Cooperative produce electricity to power the other sectors of the economy. Households and businesses that generate their own electricity are described as off the grid if they are not connected to the electric system. Most electric utilities in the U.S. are private sector. Power generation may be located near the mines or wells that produce the fuel for the generators, but they must be relatively near the consumers that use the power. light or heavy. Secondary sector industries may be further divided into light and heavy industries. Light industry produces smaller, less durable items, such as clothing or computers. Heavy industry produces durable goods, such as cars, or large quantities, such as gasoline refined from crude oil. The tertiary sector of industry. That includes services. Service companies provide intangible, that is, non-touchable goods, such as banking, food service, that would be restaurants. And you may be thinking, now wait a minute, I'm sure I can touch my food. But the restaurant didn't grow the food normally. The restaurant prepared the food. Cooking is a service. Growing the food is production. Growing the food is primary sector. Cooking the food, putting it on your plate. That would be a tertiary service sector of industry. Legal services, entertainment, health care, retail stores, wholesale warehouses, transportation, and insurance all fall into the tertiary sector of industry. Services may be private or public sector. The tertiary sector of industry 
often locates near consumers that need the services or in states or in countries with favorable laws. Lawyers tend to locate near courthouses to reduce driving time. The availability of transportation routes may influence where some businesses locate. Banking institutions. Types of banking institutions include banks, savings and loans, and credit unions. Banks are, in the U.S. at this time, private sector financial institutions that lend money at interest and provide financial services for fees. Some countries have public banks that are owned by the government. In the United States, we don't run our economy that way. Savings and loans function much like banks, but they're regulated by a different government agency. Credit unions offer many of the same services as banks. Differences include they're owned by the credit union members, those are the account holders. They often charge lower fees. And they're focused on consumers, not businesses. Some restrict membership to a certain group, usually employees of a particular organization. Securities markets. Stocks, commodities, and bonds are traded in securities markets. Stocks are certificates of partial ownership in a company. If you own stock in Apple, you own part of the company. Commodities are raw materials from the primary industrial sector, such as raw coffee beans, crude oil, iron ore, and pork bellies. Bonds are certificates for loans to governments or businesses. The New York Stock Exchange. The New York Stock Exchange, or NYSE, is the largest securities market in the world. It is a private sector tertiary industry. It is a business. It is not run by the government. Investors buy stock in corporations, providing investment capital to the corporation to buy capital equipment, hire labor, and expand operations. Stockholders may be paid dividends or receive additional shares of stock over time. The NASDAQ for National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotation System is a computer-operated stock exchange specializing in high-technology corporations. The NASDAQ is the largest electronic securities exchange in the United States. It is linked to London's International Stock Exchange and it merged with the American Stock Exchange, although the New York Stock Exchange is much more electronic than it used to be. Voluntary sector. Nonprofit or not for profit institutions such as churches, private schools, synagogues, mosques, temples, fraternal lodges, and charities form the voluntary sector. The voluntary sector is driven by issues rather than profits. The voluntary sector is funded by donations and fundraising sales, maybe like a bake sale or one of the sales where people sell uh, ribs, for example. Voluntary sector institutions locate near the people that need them. Household sector. Households, whether a single person in an apartment or extended family living on a large ranch, are the household sector. Households usually exchange labor for money with the other sectors, public, private, and voluntary, through the employment of family members. Some households participate in the private sector through home-based businesses. Economic interdependence. Regions specialize in certain products and trade with one another. Adam Smith, a famous Scottish economist, advocated for free trade in his 1776 book, The Wealth of Nations. He wrote that specialization and trade were more efficient than being self-sufficient, and the increased efficiency would make all nations wealthier. Globalization. The worldwide economic interdependence of nations today is called globalization. The economy is global, 
events in one region impact the other regions of the world. For example, bad weather in South America destroys coffee crops. The increased value of coffee, caused by the decreased global supply, helps the economy in other coffee growing areas like Kenya or Hawaii. NAFTA stands for the North American Free Trade Agreement. NAFTA eliminates most tariffs on trade between the US, Canada, and Mexico. NAFTA brought less expensive goods to the US market. However, NAFTA cost some Americans their jobs as companies move factories to Mexico because of lower wages. Other Americans gained new jobs created by trade opportunities. There were winners and there were losers. Similarly, we have CAFTA DR. The Central American Free Trade Agreement slash Dominican Republic, because the Dominican Republic is an island, or half an island, and they're out in the Caribbean, so they're not part of Central America. So it's Central America plus the Dominican Republic. It's also sometimes written DR CAFTA, which for some reason to me looks like a soft drink. CAFTA DR eliminates or reduces most remaining tariffs among the member states. CAFTA DR member states include the United States, the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Honduras, Costa Rica, and El Salvador. Member states must recognize only the United States may produce Tennessee whiskey and bourbon, a protection for Tennessee's distillers. Sugar imports to the United States from Costa Rica are subject to a quota, a limit on how much can be brought in. That provides some relief to Louisiana sugar farmers. These exceptions to free trade show that compromises are required to win Senate approval. For example, the senators from Tennessee probably told uh, the powers that be, if you want us to sign on for this, you're going to have to protect our distillers. And the senators from Louisiana at the time would have said, now, if you want us to agree to this, then you need to protect our sugarcane farmers. That's a big industry for our state. So to get the mostly free trade agreement through, there had to be some compromises to protect certain industries that were important to certain states. So it's not totally free trade, but it's closer than it was before. The European Union. The EU functions as a limited federal government for issues of security, economics, and social policy. The EU started as the European Coal and Steel Community in 1951, a treaty similar to NAFTA, and evolved through a series of additional treaties. Some people wonder if maybe one day NAFTA will lead to a North American Union that would include the United States, Canada, and Mexico into one big country. The European Commission includes the bureaucracy that operates the European Union under the guidance of the commissioners. The EU includes 27 member nations in Europe. Many EU member nations use the Euro, but not the United Kingdom. They kept the British pound. In conclusion, industries often are located near needed resources or markets to reduce transportation costs. Less expensive rural land is used for primary sector industries because urban land is too expensive for the business to be profitable, that is to make more money than it spends. The rents, the cost of being there would be too high.